Hello students, it's Dr. Yu. Welcome to part two of this video lecture series on resume writing, specifically how to write a good resume, because I know some of you may already have a resume, but we're not trying to just have a resume, we're trying to have a good resume. So that's why we have a whole series on every part of writing one. Now, in this segment, you're going to learn about selling points. It's very important to have a very clear message when you're trying to write a resume and you're trying to convince somebody through writing, through paper, to hire you. And if you don't have clear messaging, then that might be the problem that you're running into or will run into when you go on the job market. So we gotta make sure that you have clear messaging for the job market. And that's what selling points are all about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what selling points are, how to pick them, how to write them, and we're gonna also talk about why they're important. Cause you're like, why can't we just get to writing already? Cause we need this part, because this part's really important. So we'll, we'll talk about that. First, what are selling points? Selling points are essentially your unique reasons for being hired. Because here's the idea. Once again, it's a competition for jobs. It's not like you're the only person applying, like the first person in 100 years to apply at this job. No, no, like there's gonna be tons of people applying. And so how do you separate people? How do you decide whether I'm gonna hire candidate seven, candidate number 49, candidate number 123, or candidate number 219? Like how do, you, how do you decide? Well, there's gotta be unique reasons that make you stand out from the pile. The idea is that you wanna be different in a good way. Selling points help you differentiate yourself from the pile. It helps you create separation from everybody else. Now, your selling points will also vary by your job target. So depending on what you're applying for, your selling points might change based on the education and experience and history that you bring. So these are gonna be dynamic reasons for why you're gonna be hired, but there gotta be reasons that you can articulate. A lot of people just think, what, I, I should be hired because I'm a good candidate, but that's not good enough. Like why? Like what's the evidence, if you will? What's the support for that claim? And then thirdly, you gotta have at least three to five good selling points that you can just tout off any time. So you don't wanna just have one selling point. You don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket. So even if you're like, I should be hired because I have experience. Okay, well, not a good way to articulate a selling point, but let's just say that was your selling point, okay? Experience. But what if everybody else has experience? So you don't wanna put all your eggs in just one basket. You wanna have two or three reasons, and then that mix of eggs in the basket are what make you strong as opposed to trying to put it all in one and then hoping that one reason just differentiates you, which it probably wouldn't. It's gonna be the combination of reasons that differentiate you, but not one particular alone that'll differentiate you. So you gotta have at least three ready to go at any time. So let's do a little activity. So we're gonna have, you're gonna be doing activities throughout this workshop or throughout this lecture series. So here's the first one. Imagine you're in an interview at your dream job. So this is the job that you want. And the interview asks you only one question and will base the entire hiring decision on your answer. So there's a one question interview, that's it. There's no follow up, there's nothing else. They're just gonna ask you one question. Okay, you ready for the question? Why should we hire you? How would you answer this question? Think about it and write down the key points to your answer. So you don't need to write it out word for word per se if you, if you, if you don't wanna do that. If you do, great, great practice. At least write the bullet points to this answer. What would be the key points that you make? So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for you to do this. So start, don't just look at the screen, start. Okay, and then I'll pick up in a few seconds here. This is iced tea, not scotch. Okay, so let's see how you did. How you answer that question is gonna be a good indicator of what your selling points are going to be if you really thought this through. If you didn't think it through, you're probably not gonna have some good selling points. 
Now, if you were really stuck on this, because it's kind of like, it's kind of like that question, tell me about yourself, it's so open-ended, and you're kind of just used to people figuring it out for themselves. We kind of do the same thing with the job search. We just kind of say, why should we be hired? Well, can't you figure it out? Can't you see my resume? Can't you? Do it? And we want, we try to put it on the employer to figure it out. No, 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 no. That's not what you're supposed to do in the job market, okay? You're supposed to, it's not the employer's job to figure out why you're good. It's your job to tell them why they're good and to convince them why you're good. It's, it's for you to make it clear and then for them to see it. But you don't put the onus on them to figure out why you're good for the position. You're going to tell them why you're good for the position and they're just going to agree with it. So if you had trouble with this, here are some good sources for selling points. Number one, experience. Experience is always a good source of a selling point. So if you have experience in the position, that's a good start. So you're going to want to mention something about your experience with the selling point or with the, with the particular position. Personal attributes are always good. So maybe you're very dedicated or you're a hard worker or you show up on time to everything or you're a team player. You love team environments. Okay, that's a good personal attribute that you can use as a selling point. A skill set. If you have a specific skill set that you just acquired in college, let's say you just acquired graphic design skills or you just acquired auto repair skills and this skill set's exactly what the job requires, great. So talk about that skill set and how you're good at that skill set. Not just, not just that you have the skill set, but why you're good with the skill set. So talk about a cool project that you've done that demonstrates your skill set. Also education and training. Look, if, if you're applying for a job that requires you to be up to date on the latest and greatest trends, maybe you're in fashion marketing, let's say, well, your education is going to be a huge asset because perhaps you just graduated and you just learned all the latest trends because you just got out of school and we learned about the new whatever fashion marketing trend that there is. Okay, cool. Your personal connection to the product. If you have some kind of personal connection to the company's mission or the company's values or what the company does, then you can talk about that. Let's say you're going to work at a nonprofit. And the nonprofit is working with kids with autism. And maybe your personal connection to autism is you have a little brother who's autistic. Okay, so maybe that's a selling point. And what you can do is you can you can frame that as I have a personal connection with it, so I can really identify with the mission, and it's gonna make me want to work harder because I'm always gonna be thinking about my little brother as I work at this nonprofit or whatever. Okay, cool. Personal connection, not just I have one, but just that the personal connection is going to lead to me doing better work. Or sometimes people try to do this. And so I, I've put this on here. I used to not, but now I'm kind of like, you know, sometimes it works. Your outsider status. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to do a career change and you, let's say you don't have any experience with the, the career you're trying to change to, you can try to sell that as a positive because you can sell yourself as an outsider. You can kind of say, I'm going to bring all the experience that I have in my former industry and I'm going to use that framework to help me to help you have new insights into what you do as an outsider. And then you can also, you can, there's a lot of ways you can frame outsider. So you can do kind of like, I'm going to be the outside thinking person who's going to have new ideas. Or you can also sell yourself as the outsider who's trainable. So then you're like, I'm coming from the outside. So I'll be very open-minded to new ideas and creativity because I don't, I'm not set in my ways. So you can kind of take that route too, if you want. So it just depends on what you're trying to do and what you know, it depends on a lot of things, but that's at least two options there. Okay, so your selling points, these are six ideas that I just gave you. So if you still can't think of any, like, why should I be hired? I don't know. Well, like, any of these? Because if, if you don't have any of these, then I don't know if you're qualified for the job either <laughs> at that point. Like, I don't know if you actually should be applying for this if you can't name any of these things for why you should be hired. Now, how do I pick my selling points? So I always go with your strongest. Whenever you do your selling points and you write these down and you start getting used to saying these, I always list my strongest first. Usually experience is gonna be your strongest selling point if you have it, because experience sells. Like we like experienced tried and true candidates, but hard skills you know, are always good to start with because those are the things that employers really look for. But always pick your strongest selling points that you're gonna sell. These are the things that make me look the best. Secondly, they gotta be relevant. So pick selling points that are most relevant to the job that you're trying to go to. So you, like, if, if you're like on a generic job search, then you might list all of your selling points. But when you're on a very targeted job search where there's a particular company you're trying to work at, you want to pick the selling points that make you look the strongest and also are the most relevant to what the company values. 
So depending on what that industry is and what that company is, your selling points are gonna change. You're applying at a school, you're not gonna talk about increasing profit margins at a school, right? But if you're applying for a company, you're not gonna talk about educational, like liberal arts, you know, at a company, unless, unless it's like a liberal arts book, textbook company or something, then I guess maybe you would, but it's gotta be relevant. And then two hard, one soft. Soft. We're not talking about what you order at Taco Bell, the, you know, at 2 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. But what we're talking about here is you want to have at least two hard, two hard skills and then one soft skill. So I don't usually recommend doing all soft skill selling points. So a soft skill, like a set of soft skill selling points would be like, I'm reliable, I'm trustworthy, I'm, you know, I'm good with people. Like that's too many soft skills. I would wanna have at least something that's hard or at least hard qualifications. So talk about a skill set that you have or talk about experience or training, something that's more hard qualification versus soft qualification. Like oh, I'm a good person, you know, like, yeah, I mean, that's good. But like, we wanna make sure you have the technical expertise to fulfill the position. So two hard, one soft. <clears throat> so let's do this activity again, but now use the three sources of selling points and write three complete reasons to support your answer to this question. So here's what I mean by three complete reasons. What I don't want you, what I don't want you to do is this. Why should we hire you? Uh, I have experience. I know how to use Microsoft Excel and I'm good with people. Okay, no, that's not good. That's not good. Give us some support for the answer. So I'm experienced. Okay. Tell me a complete sentence as to why your experience is good experience. If you're going to say I'm good at Microsoft Excel, give me a reason why you're good at Microsoft Excel or give me evidence that shows that you're good at Microsoft Excel. If you're going to say you're a good person, give me evidence that you're a good person. So make each of these selling points, probably two to three sentences at least. Okay. So take a few minutes. Think about this. So pause the video if you need to, but I'm going to sit here and wait again and sip my iced tea while you do this. Okay, when I usually have clients and people, I, I, I taught resume workshops at the nonprofit I was at. When people do this, they're often on the right track, but then there's some things that usually people need help with. So I'm gonna try to anticipate the two most common things I see when people do selling points. The first thing is personal attributes. A lot of times people wanna sell personal attributes, which is great. Like I said, personal attributes are totally fine to do with selling as a selling point. Now, like I said, I, I prefer more of the hard qualifications and soft, but you know, if you got one or two in there, that's perfectly fine. Now here's what I see people do all the time. I am reliable and that's their selling point. So literally it's like, why should I hire you? I'm reliable. Okay. So what's the problem with that? So just think to yourself, if somebody were to come to your, to, if you're interviewing somebody, let's say you're the interviewer and somebody says, I'm reliable. Like what would, what would go through your mind? Okay. Like anybody can say that, right? Like just because you say you're reliable doesn't mean that you are. And in fact, a lot of times the people who say they're reliable are the people who show up late all the time because they know that this is the problem. So they try to like cover it real fast and they say I'm reliable and then they're not. So if you, if you go this route, it's it, and you want to sell personal attributes, that's fine but you can't just claim an attribute and act like it's self-evident that this is the case. So here's what I recommend. And this is going to come back in the interview lecture as well. When we talk about interviewing, this is going to come back again, but it applies now in resumes because it's, it's, it just, it's a common principle and it's beautiful because it applies to so many things. The formula you want to use whenever you're selling personal attributes, I'm reliable, I'm friendly, I'm easy to work with. I'm a good communicator, all those things. You want to use a formula called headline plus story. Headline plus story is, is the common formula for interviewing. It's the common formula for resumes. It's common formula. It's like this basic, like 
formula just keeps coming back. It's like the golden ratio of like the universe, but this is like the golden ratio of the job search, if you will. So here's how to best explain headline plus story. Imagine a newspaper. Now imagine this newspaper only had headlines, but no stories. So you'd see a headline at the top and then no story with it. Now that would be an awful newspaper because you'd have this beautiful headline, but there's nothing to support, support the headline. Now, I understand, I guess, kind of Twitter's like that now. Well, and then you see how bad Twitter is. So even then, it's terrible, okay? So when you say, I'm reliable, you're like a newspaper with no story. You have a headline with no story. Now, imagine that same newspaper, but instead, there were no headlines. There were just stories. So when you open the newspaper, you don't know what any story is about. It's just paragraphs, and there's no headlines to tell you what the story's about. So you just have to read it to know what it's about. Okay, that would be a horrible newspaper to have to sift through. Because like, if I just want to read sports and there's no headlines, like, how do I know where the sports section is? Okay, or how do I know if I want to read this story about such and such crime or you know such and such story about politics? Like, it'd be a pain. So people who have stories but no headline are the people who ramble, right? And it's just like this long thing, and I don't know what the point is. So you want to have both because the headline sets the framework for what the story is going to be about, or at least tells me what the takeaway might be, or telegraphs what the takeaway is, and then the story serves as evidence. The other analogy is think of it as claim plus evidence, right? Like you make a claim and then you support it with evidence. So here's a better way to sell personal attributes. I have a proven record of reliability. At my previous job, I had 100% attendance and was on time to every shift. Okay. Now I can see how you're reliable. You tell us what you're, that you're reliable, and then you give some evidence to show that reliability. Okay, now I have a basis to, to, to believe what you say, and then there you go. And it sounds impressive, and it sounds better, and it actually persuades me a little bit, you see, versus I'm reliable. Okay, not good, not good. So those of you who did personal attributes, is there a story to go with it? Is there an example to go with it? Is there evidence to go with it? If not, Add example or evidence to it. Do headline plus story. That's the first common issue. Second common mistake, experience. Now, sell experience. If you have experience, you should be talking about experience. That should be one of your selling points if you have experience. So here's what people do. Here's what people do. They'll go, I have 10 years of experience working as a salesperson. Okay, great. You have 10 years of experience working as a salesperson. Now, there are two problems with this statement. Two problems. Do you know what the two problems are? Think about it. What might be the problem with this statement? There are two. The first thing, I have 10 years working, 10 years of experience working as a salesperson. Okay. So does that, doesn't mean you're good at your job though. There are people who have 20 years experience in the NFL and they're called third string quarterbacks. You know? So just because you have 10 years experience doesn't mean you're good. It just means that you've been working as a salesperson for 10 years and haven't been let go from your job. Like you can be, you can have 10 years of experience and be mediocre. Like you did. So like experience is just showing up. It's not necessarily excelling at something. It just means that you have 10 years of showing up somewhere and claiming to be a salesperson, but it doesn't mean you're necessarily good at it. You could be mediocre. You could even be terrible at it, but maybe you just like, you know, you have a good union or something and then you don't get fired anywhere. Okay. So just because you have experience doesn't necessarily mean you're good. And I know like we tend to just assume that if somebody has experience, they know what they're doing. No, no, not necessarily, not necessarily. Like if, if they aren't held to high standards, if their supervisor doesn't care, if they can get, if they just do the bare minimum, like they're not necessarily good. They're not necessarily good. I'm sure some of my older students, you know, non-traditional students, you have people at your workplace. You're like, how is this person still working here? Like this person's so incompetent. Who are they sleeping with? I mean, I don't know who they, you know, whatever, what crime connections do they have to like, they connect to the mafia and, or whatever, and somehow they're still here, okay? So we all know this. We know that if you have experience, just because you have experience, you're not necessarily good at your job. So just don't assume, because you have it, that you're good. But then there's another serious problem with this statement too. I have 10 years of experience working as a salesperson. So this is what you open yourself up to, okay. So you have 10 years of experience working as a salesperson. Well, Mary over here has 12 years of experience working as a salesperson. So is Mary better? 
Does Mary win? Oh, shoot. So you don't want to come down to numbers in this case, numbers of years of experience, because there's always going to be somebody in the pool who's going to have more years than you do. And if you just make it about numbers, well, I have 10 years, I beat people with nine and eight and seven. Well, if somebody had 11, they got, they're better than you. So you don't really want to go here. You don't really want to go there. Here's what you really want to do. Here's the formula. I call it the success formula of experience. Instead of saying, I have 10 years of experience working as a salesperson, talk about years of success. So we're not calling experience anymore. We're calling it years of success, years of proven reliability, delivering X, Y, and Z results. See here, you're talking about years of experience holding a title. What you really want to do is talk about your proven record delivering certain results that are valuable to the company. So if you have five years of success, constantly improving sales, you know, building relationships and training employees, that's much better than I have 10 years of experience working in sales. You see, because you're speaking to the employer's bottom line. That's one of the critical things. So I'm clapping again. Speak to the employer's bottom line. Okay. Speak to the employer's bottom line. Okay. So you want that in your resume. You want to be saying that stuff. You want to be talking that stuff X, Y, and Z. So here's what it might look like. I offer 10 years of proven success, closing sales, creating loyal customers and building lasting relationships. Boom. And notice too, I have 10 years. It's like, I'm bringing 10 years. I have like a backpack and see, I have 10 years of experience in my backpack. No, no, I offer, I'm a value proposition. I bring to the table. I put it on the table right here. 10 years of proven success. I'm offering you something. I'm giving you something versus I just have, you have a backpack. It's cool. No, I'm bringing you. I'm bringing you 10 years of proven success. So I like the word offer rather than have. So I offer 10 years of proven success, closing sales. Okay, that's an X. Y, creating loyal customers. Z, building lasting relationships. I like things in three. So I always wanna pick the three key values that I know an employer wants in this position and I talk about them because I know that it's not just showing up to work and holding a title, it's about succeeding at work and bringing results. That's what gets employers interested. So once again, I'm clapping again, because I want you to remember, it's about results, not holding titles. And so that's what your resume should be about. It's not about how long you held a title and what your duties were, it's about your accomplishments. What results did you bring? What results did you bring at this job? And what good results did you bring? You wanna make the argument that I'm gonna bring you results, okay? So that's what you gotta be thinking when you write your resume. Results, not experience, results. Okay, so now it's your turn. Again, what I want you to do, I want you to practice the success formulas. So I want you to write one personal attribute selling point using headline plus story. So try that, see how it works. And then also write an experience selling point using the success formula. So based on what your job target is, write your experience and use the success formula to talk about results that you bring. Now, if you're really young, like you're like 18, 19, you're like, I don't know. Okay. So this, Take the little things that you've done, like the little jobs that you've had, or if you haven't even had a job yet. I know I have some students, sometimes they've never even held a job yet. So first off, get a job at some point in college. Don't, you know, you need to have some resume experience. But anyways, uh, you, you talk about your education then. Talk about what you do in school. Because if you don't have a job, that should be because you're a full-time student and you're focusing on school. Okay, so talk about school, okay? And then results that you bring as a student. So I'm gonna sit here and wait again for you to, to do this. So go ahead and pause the video if you need more time. And then I'm going to sit my IC again because it looks cool. Okay, so you're probably gonna need to pause the video to get through everything, but hopefully this gets you started and gets you thinking in terms of the formulas, in terms of selling points. Now I'm sure you're wondering, why? Why are we doing this? Okay, so let's talk about the why. Why are selling points important? The reason selling points are important is because they're absolutely endemic to the job search. 
So remember the career ecosystem. See, we're going full circle now. We're going back to the career ecosystem. I told you the career ecosystem is everything. When you go back to the career ecosystem, you're going to need to be able to say your selling points, articulate your selling, not just in your head. Well, my selling points are in my head. No, you got to be able to say them to people. You got to be able to say it orally. You got to be able to say it in writing. You got to be able to say it. Well, those are pretty much the only two ways you can say it. So yeah, you can sign it too if you know ASL. Okay. So career ecosystem, you got to be able to articulate these things. Here's why. First off with professional development, you're going to be able to develop selling points there as you pick up new education, new trainings, and so forth. And you want to be able to articulate the professional development that you have to employers, to people and such. But when you go think about your online presence, these selling points that you're developing now will be used in your LinkedIn profile summary. So when we go into LinkedIn later on, all I'm going to say is make sure when you write your summary, you talk about your selling points. Oh, okay. So these selling points that you're creating now will be useful when we get to LinkedIn. Applying for jobs. Your selling points will be in your summary, number one, in your resume, and your cover letter is going to highlight your, your selling points too. So what do I talk about in my cover letter? Your selling points. What do I put in summary? Your selling points. Oh, okay. So your selling points are everything when you're applying for jobs. It's gonna come back multiple times. Why would I repeat my selling points so much? Because the thing is, you're gonna be filled with a lot of information. Your resume is gonna have a lot of stuff. To have a clear message, redundancy is okay because that ensures that the employer gets the point. If you have your message hidden, like in one spot, and it's never talked about again, they're gonna miss the point. So you gotta make sure that this message is clear, that they can see it, and that they don't have any chance of missing it. And then face-to-face -face networking. Oh, 30 second elevator pitch. What's that? Oh, my selling points. So everyone's like, I gotta do my 30 second elevator pitch workshop. It's a selling points. So your selling points come into every aspect of your career and you got to be able to articulate them. You got to be able to say them and you got to be able to say them with confidence. You got to be able to write them. And so that's why we're spending so much time here on just selling points. And the selling points are the core reason you're on the job market. The reason you're applying for a job is because you believe you're qualified. Like that's the only reason you would apply for a job. I understand some people, like one time I applied for a job because I just wanted to see if I got an interview. Like I understand it's like Tinder, you go on just for confidence boost, but you know, like most of the time though, even then you're still wanting to get hired. Like people don't apply for jobs just for fun. You know, it's like, it's, it's cause you just want to submit your resume. Like even then I still wanted an interview. Like I still wanted to talk to people, you know, at the end of the day. So you want to make sure that you have good selling points. So what did we talk about today? We talked about selling points. We talked about how you pick them. We talked about how you write them because you're going to have to be able to write them. And really it should be articulate them. I should maybe change that. How do I articulate them? Cause we talked about saying them first later, you're going to learn how to write them too in resume speak. Cause we're going to talk about resumes next, like with writing. And then we talked about why they're important and you got to have these figured out when I do job search coaching and stuff. Cause I still do that with clients, executive clients. We, this is the first thing we do in the first meeting is what are your selling points? Why should I hire you? When we do interview coaching, that's the first question we work on. Why should we hire you? Like if you watch one of my interview coaching sessions, that's literally the first question I ask, I ask them, why should I hire you? Okay. We got to work on that. Cause once we answer the, why should we hire you question? Once we know how to answer that well, all the other interview questions are essentially just variations of why should we hire you <laughs> at the end of the day? Like it's, it's, you've covered like 60% of possible questions with why should I hire you? Cause that's what the interview is about at the end of the day. It's just a hypothesis. Why should we hire you? Okay. So you got to know why you got to be able to articulate it. Do not put it on the employer to figure it out on their own. Cause the employer ain't going to figure it out because they don't have time. And there's going to be other candidates who are going to be doing that for them. And so with that, we'll talk about, we'll get into actual resume writing with formats, headers, and summaries in the next segment.